Hi everybody, this is Adam, the lead developer of Railroader, and this is the June 2023 development update video. If you're not familiar with Railroader, here's what you need to know. It's a railroad simulator set in transition era Appalachia. It's all about the hands-on experience of moving trains with a purpose, switching freight cars, running passenger trains, and restoring a short line railroad. It's single player and multiplayer, and I plan to release it later this year. You can wishlist it on Steam right now. The link is in the description. In our last update, we announced that we were extending the main line and adding derailments. Since then, we've put a whole lot of work into refining our plans for the map. I've invested heavily in the technology behind the systems that make up the game, and our testing team has put a lot of miles on those locomotives for science. So let's get to the details. First, the map. I've got some big news to share about the map. If you've been watching the screenshots we post in the Railroader Discord, you've probably noticed there's a lot more vegetation now. Grassy fields, lush greenery along the right-of-way, more trees. Even the terrain textures are much nicer now. The edge between the ballast and the grass is smooth, and there's more variance in the textures. My focus over the past few months has been on building out the game aspects of Railroader, its company mode. In company mode, you'll start out with very little couple of locomotives, a coach, a caboose. Your goal is to restore your short line to operation between two interchanges by delivering materials to repair bridges and track along the way. As you grow, you'll be able to afford more powerful locomotives, which will make it easier to move heavier trains. And while I think it would be relatively easy to make locomotives the focus of the progression in Railroader, I think it's much more interesting if the map is the primary measurement of progress in the game. When the game started its development, the main line was about 13 miles long. This was cozy, but sometimes a little too cozy, especially in large multiplayer games. And it was awfully easy to see all of it in a relatively short period of time. By investing in the game's map tooling, it became practical to expand the main line to 30 miles, as we covered in the last update video. As we've tested on this new 30 mile main line, however, it's become clear that it didn't create the kind of arc that I wanted. The westernmost point which you were building to was Almond on the shores of Fontana Lake. It was cool, but it didn't provide the sense of reward that I wanted. You may know that the game draws inspiration from the real-life Murphy Branch in western North Carolina. The terrain is built using real-life height map data from the Murphy Branch. I think this adds a lot to the game, but it also creates constraints when it comes to creating a certain gameplay experience. Almond, geographically, wasn't challenging to reach, and the landforms weren't conducive to adding industries. The game needed a better western terminus. But where? One of the more well-known portions of the Murphy Branch is the Red Marble Grade, a three-mile climb topping out at 5%, starting at Nantahala, about 10 miles west of Almond. After the climb, there's a steep descent from Topton to Andrews, which lies in a broad valley. Perfect for late-game industry. We'll see an example of that later. Building to Andrews would expand the main line by another 20 miles. That's another 66%. But it would also give the game what I think it needs in terms of late game challenge and more room to have different options for industries. So that's what I've done. Railroader now has a 54 mile main line. Will this impact our 2023 release target? Populating this expanded main line and the added towns and industries will definitely take time, but we don't think it'll push us past 2023. More importantly, it gives the game the arc it needs. Making this decision and experiencing the red marble grade has been one of the most exciting parts of this game development experience for me. We can't wait for you to try it out for yourself later this year. One of the design challenges with Railroader is making sure that the single player experience isn't overwhelming. In multiplayer, you have other players to help tackle the challenge of moving all these cars. But in single player, it's just you and it can feel like a lot of work. I think a lot of players will love this, but I want to do what we can to give you the ability to make it feel like less of a grind should you choose to. Railroader addresses this difficulty in two ways. First, Railroader lets you determine how much work you want. Most industries are optional. You decide whether you want to serve that industry. Also, each industry has five tiers. 
Lower tiers have lower demands, that's fewer cars, but higher tiers offer bonuses for timely deliveries. You'll start at the first tier, and if you meet the performance goals, you'll have the option of moving to the next tier. If you like some industries more than others, you can use this to control how often or whether you serve them. Second, Railroader will offer basic AI engineers. Some of the details are still being worked out, such as whether you have to pay them for their time, but in short, here's how they work. Any locomotive can be set to road or yard mode. In road mode, you set a direction and a max speed, and it goes until it reaches another train, a switch thrown against it, or a stop signal. Yard mode is similar, except you have to give it explicit clearances in car counts. Now, the AI engineer isn't an AI conductor. It won't classify a yard for you or run a local, but it does enable you to move several trains at once, and it's really nice to work with when switching an industry, letting you focus on planning out the moves. Let's look at the AI in action. So, there's a taste of the AI engineer and railroader. We've been having a lot of fun testing it, particularly in switching settings, where it gives you the feeling of working with an engineer, watching from the ground, or riding on the back of a cut, giving car counts. Road mode, on the other hand, is geared to help with those longer distance runs. You can set any number of other AI trains in road mode. Just be sure to arrange their meets by setting the switches. There's still more work to be done on AI engineers, particularly on the UI, but we hope you agree this feature shows a lot of promise, as well as providing a way to add a lot of action to single player or even multiplayer games. Let's talk a bit more about derailments in Railroader. Derailments can occur for two reasons, striking another train or running too fast on a curve. Now, we've set speed limits on the track, most of it's 35, some of it's 45, and there are some slower areas as well, marked by speed signs. But also, larger locomotives will derail much more easily on curves that are too tight for them. When a derailment occurs, well, here's one now, the train will generally skid to a stop, each derailed car taking damage and kicking up a lot of dust along the way. Like I mentioned, the derailed cars have taken some damage. Right now, they're re-railed gradually using a keyboard shortcut, a simple simulation of using a block and tackle to get the car back on the rails. I have some ideas on ways we might adjust this in the future, but for now that's to be determined. Because trains move on splines in Railroader, the derailed cars never fully leave the track. That's okay though, because this does exactly what it needs to do. This is a game about running a railroad, and if you derail a train, you're going to have to re-rail it, and then do a lot of repairs, and you won't earn as much when you deliver the damaged cars. 
If your locomotive is damaged badly enough, it won't pull well, and you might need to bring another locomotive out to tow it and the rest of the train back. So let's look quickly at how repairs happen. The mechanic for repairs is rather simple. There are designated tracks at Dillsboro and Bryson that cars will be repaired on. Spot the damaged car on the track and it'll be repaired over time. Only a set amount of repair can be done at any given time, so if you have many cars on the tracks, the repairs will take longer. Industries are a big part of Railroader. They're your customers, they're how you get work. We talked about tiers earlier, but I'd like to show you a couple representative industries. Before we do though, I want to make sure you're aware that the industrial buildings we have on the railroad right now are mostly mock-ups and placeholders. In fact, we haven't even placed buildings for most of our industries. This is the last big chunk of modeling work, and we're in the process of tackling this right now. Okay, let's talk industries. Many of the industries on the railroader map are fairly small. They're house tracks, coal and fuel dealers, the odd agricultural concern that dot the main line. These are nice because you can usually switch them pretty quickly and move on to the next town or industry. Here's one of those smaller industries at Bryson, a coal dealer. At Tier 1, it takes one car every other day. At Tier 5, it takes about two cars a day. But we've also got some big industries that I'd like to show you. The biggest is Snowbird Paper in Andrews. It takes six different types of load and produces four types. Paper, tall oil, caustic soda, and a whole lot of pulp. On Tier 1, it takes 13 to 14 cars per day. And on Tier 5, it takes around 45 cars per day. That's a lot of work. Now, again, these are placeholder buildings. In fact, this is just one building copied many times to suggest the size of the complex. I think it gets the job done, though. We've got one last topic to cover, and that's passenger service. Passenger service is interesting for a game where one of the goals is to earn money. And while passenger service doesn't pay a lot in Railroader, it's still fun to run. I also have some ideas on how to make it more rewarding, but that's a topic for another update. Let's look at how passenger service works right now in the game. Over time, waiting passengers ebb and flow from each of the stations on the railroad. They all have specific places they're trying to get to. Once they're dropped off at their destination, you receive a fare. So, how do the passengers know whether your train is going to where they want to go? Each passenger car has a tab that lets you set the destinations for that car. So if my train is going to Silva, I check Silva on each car. Passengers that want to go to Silva will board the car. Once I arrive at Silva, those passengers will disembark and the Silva destination will be cleared and I can select as many destinations as I want. If a passenger's destination is unchecked before they arrive, they'll disembark and wait at that next station you stop at. This makes it possible to transfer passengers without setting up complicated passenger timetables. Passenger timetables are something to think about for the future, but I expect this to be how passenger service works in 1.0. What's great about it is that it lets you run the trains according to your own self-imposed schedule, or not, while giving you the flexibility to do other work that needs to be done on the railroad. Well, that about wraps it up for the June 2023 update video. There's more to share that I didn't have time to cover fully. New avatars, new formulaic industries that only ship loads when they receive the necessary ordered loads. There's also a simple loan system to help you grow faster. More about those in the future. I also wanted to mention that Matt, who came on board as our community manager almost a year ago, will be stepping down. Matt's been a huge help, keeping the community informed, helping put videos and announcements together, and posting our daily screenshots. Matt's been a great part of the team, and we'll miss him. Thank you, Matt. If you like what you see in Railroader, give us your support by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and wishlisting the game on Steam. The link is in the description. If you'd like to discuss the game and see daily screenshots, join our Discord. That link is also in the description. That's all for now. Until the next update, thanks for watching.